is there more than one Dagda? Well, Dagda, you focus Hi, hello and welcome. I'm John O'Sullivan from the Irish Pagan School, and I will do my best to answer your questions around Irish mythology, culture, history, spirituality, and everything else that we can really talk about from our Irish connection here at our school. And so, yeah, I'm going to do my best to answer this question. It was the one that came up in our TikTok community, actually, about there being stories about more than one Dagda, and someone was wondering, what's my thoughts on that? And yeah, it, it's interesting and complex, I'll be honest with you, because when we talk about these characters, we're talking about information that was written down in, at the earliest that we can prove currently, between the 8th and the 9th century common era. That's from the linguistics, from the, the old, old form of Irish written down in these manuscripts. And the manuscripts themselves are dated from between the 11th and the 14th century common era. And we do know that the, the early monasteries where these were written down and these stories were collected and collated um, did read copy books. So there was a whole scribing practice there as books began to age and to fade. They were copied and copied to make sure that the information was maintained, which is the only reason that we have all of this amazing content and stories, because so much was eradicated by the various waves of colonization that was done upon the island. And so, yeah, when we're looking back at this information, it's it's very detailed very old and very convoluted because again it's not just one book it's not just one source there's multiple different manuscripts from multiple different eras telling the same story or different versions slightly different versions of the same story and then wildly different versions of the same story um and that's why we and well i, I say we but that's why academics have been working at this for generations to try and wade their way through it and I, again I, I love being involved in it as much as i can and supporting the practices wherever i can and um, which is why i do what i do here and teach and talk about this at the irish pagan school so yeah it's not just one story it's not just one sacred book that's been handed down and relayed like there are many books book of kells book of fermoy yellow book of lekin great book of lekin the lower nahudra like all of these, the book of the Dun Cow, all, all of this stuff is kind of written down in segments and various parts in all of these manuscripts across hundreds of years. And then when we talk about our understanding of this information, the academic structure of it breaks it down into cycles. So we have the mythological cycle, then we have the Ulster cycle, the Fenian cycle, also known as the Oceanic cycle, and then we have the cycle of kings. But all of this is a way of encapsulating the content from all these various books into a theme or topic that allows us to compare, contrast and understand where and in what timelines these stories are taking place. So now that we have that out of the way, if you also want to know more specifically about that, there's a class on that over at the Irish Pagan School. But when we get into the Dagdas, specifically the Dagda, things can be a little bit tricky really because he shows up in a number of locations in the stories but there are very few stories that are specifically about him in almost all of the tales he is fulfilling a role as an intermediary as a support as a uh, a go-between he's he's working for his tribe his tour his people and um, he's working for his family like he's he's doing everything he can to support all of those around him um, and there's not many tales which are actually just about him, who he is, where he comes from, what he does. And we know a lot about his power. We know a lot about what he's capable of. But all of the time, it's it's what he's doing for other people around him. Like there's a great story and one that we t point to a lot where he gets the name the Dagda. And that's after a, 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 a war council, really, on the run up to the second battle of Moitura. The Fomorians are going to be invading. We know what's going to be happening. So a whole lot of big names go off for a year. And it's called the Meeting of the Men of the Goddess, where they try and plan ahead for this invasion and figure out what they're going to do when the invasion comes. And it's here that the Dagda gets the name, the Dagda. Although he has been referred to as the Dagda multiple times before that in the mythology and the stories that come before that. So at this Meeting of the Men of the Goddess, the Second Battle of Moitura, 
Um, it has been quite a while since the two of the Danon have been in Ireland. Bress has been king. There has been like, you know, uh, an oppression because Bress favoured his Fomorian ancestry. He's eventually toppled as king and he goes running to the Fomorians to gather a war host to invade. Nuada is restored to being king after he has his arm put back on and his silver prosthesis is removed and he gets replaced. The whole story about that. Um, so it's been a while. It absolutely has been a while. But we know that during the first battle of Moitura, when Nuda loses his arm, the Dagda is there fighting in the, in the field. And, and one day, actually, he specifically commands the left, the entire left flank of the battle against the Firbuluk. And he charges on his own and opens a gap wide enough for 150 warriors to follow after him. And he's called the Dagda. He's referred to as the Dagda. And it's on that day that like Nuada faces off against Shreng, the champion of the Fear Bullock, and has his arm lopped off. And it's pretty much game over if Nuada is killed because he's king of the Tua de Danon. And then the Dagda hears of this, barrels his way across the entire battlefield, smashes open the Fear Bullock line, and then stands over Nuada, allowing no one to get the finishing blow, staving off an entire like Shreng, this champion, and all of his elite warriors keeping them away from getting the death blow on Nuada until Nuada is safely removed from the battlefield. And so he's still referred to as the Dagda. Now, there's a lot of time frame that goes on here. He's referred to as the Dagda, but then later on, it's the story where he offers to do all of the, the jobs that all these other notables had promised after the meeting of the men of the goddess. And it's then Nuada who refers to him as the Dagda, the goodly one, the good god, the good hand. Um, because not because he's morally good, it's because he's good at everything. And whatever he says he does, it's pretty much guaranteed fucking done. So this is the individual that we have through all of the stories and so all of the time he is shown to be this one person now we do know he has other names we know he's referred to as Uchid, which is his primary first name but there's many Uchids as well and Uchid means horse lord or, or like you know pretty much yeah horse lord is the the best translation we can have for it but there's a lovely part um where he performs a rosk poem where he describes himself in a poetic naming and it starts with Fir Ben Bruch Bromage. Um, I don't have the full. I'm, I'm okay. I know it, but I'm not confident saying it out loud. Obviously, I need to practice that. But it's a full kind of flowing descriptive form of who he is, the man of the peaks, uh, which is Fir Ben Bruch. Um, and then also Bromage. Bromage is the loud lapped farter, <laughs> which I think is is hilarious, and um, because. Dagda's humor is the kind of guy who, you know, for fun would sidle beside you and fart and then could blame someone else. Um be because it's entertaining, you know, and not everything has to be serious. But is there more than one Dagda? From everything I've gone through, there's only one other mention of a different Dagda, and that's Dagda Dawn. And Dagda Dawn is referred to as um this god of the dead or god who functions for the dead, because Dawn is said to be Eberdon. Eberdon was one of the sons of Mill, the Milesians who came into Ireland in the last wave of people, the the last invasion really. Um, and it's from the Milesians that the Gael people are said to be descended. And so Eberdon was said to be the first person to have been slain because pretty much he was planning a genocide on Ireland and then the mystical forces of Ireland were like, nope, specifically you, your ship, uh, of, of all of the invading fleet, a small localized storm picks up around him and his ship and wrecks the shit out of them. <laughs> so um, yeah, he becomes Don and the rock that he crashes up on there is where he's said to be buried. And that's then said to be chocked on the house of the dead off the coast of Ireland there. And so that's where we get the Dag the Dawn. And so many people look at this and say, okay, well, is that, does that mean there's a different Dagda? That it's Dawn Dagda and not like the Dagda. Um, but then we know the story of the Dagda taking up the club. So he has the power over life and death. So does that make him different? Does that? And so really to kind of get into the answer, or I suppose my answer to the question, I don't see that there are different Dagdas. For me, in my experiences and my pursuit of this information, there is the Dagda, just that it is this one guy who does all of these services for his community, for his people. He eventually becomes king in Ireland and rules for 80 years there. He does everything he can to look after his children. When Angus gets in over his head, promising too much, he like he's like, oh, I promised to clear an entire forest. And Dagda's like, fine. And he clears the entire forest in one night. And then Angus comes back and playing the next day, going, oh, I promised I'd turn like, the, the new plane with like rivers and stuff. And the Dagda's like, fine. And for his kid, he goes out and he, he drags out rivers all over this new plane. 
Um, so there's so many times that we see him functioning in his service to his community. Um, and so when people ask me about the Dagda, I usually say the Dagda is as the Dagda does. And what he does in the stories time and again is use every ounce of his power and his ability to save and serve others, even down to becoming king in Ireland for 40, for 80 years. Sorry, Lou ruled for 40 years, Dagda ruled for 80 years after that. Um, so is there more than one Dagda? For me, no. But... But folks, this is where I will throw a little bit of confusion into the mix because there are only two individuals who are referred to as on, as in the. And so he is referred to as on Dagda, as in the Dagda. And the other is on Morrigan or Namoringa if you're dealing with the, the multiple. So on Morrigan, the Morrigan. So Nuda is Nuda, Lu is Lu, Gwivnu is Gwivnu, like um the the three gods of skill, the three Dinidanan, like but that's you know Gwivnu, Lukta, and Krajna, like they all have their own names, but the Dagda is referred to as the Dagda, and the Morrigan is referred to as the Morrigan. So whether this means that there is a singular individual who gets a certain amount of status in that way or that it's a recognition of a certain level of power within the communities or the fact that both the morrigan and the dagda are the only ones specifically referred to as gods in the stories maybe or and this is where the stuff gets really spicy um is it possible that the dagda is a title it's some kind of function that a, a, a different individual can step into to serve so is there more than one Dagda? Maybe there's been multiple people who have served as the Dagda. Maybe there's multiple who serve as the Morrigan. But as I said, it gets very spicy very quickly. And I have come across people who try and intimate that, you know, they are child of the, a certain deity or they are reborn manifestation. Of, fuck it. I've had someone turn around and say that they believe that I am the Dagda. I am this generation's the Dagda. And I will say that that freaks me the fuck out. It really does. I am John O'Sullivan. I, I refer to myself as the Dagda Bard. I'm here to tell the stories. I'm here to talk about him. I'm here to kind of highlight the, for people the lessons and learnings you can get from experiencing the Irish mythology, from experiencing connection with Ireland through our stories. That's my role. That's what I do. And, you know, I function and I serve my community. Like, you know, I am I have been asked to step into a priestly role and to I'm honored to say, you know, officiate for some people's unions coming up this year. I will definitely serve my community. I'm honored to fucking do that. Um, but I do have to honor my relationship with the God that I follow and I work for, not because I am that in this generation. So no, 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 folks. No, definitely. Ego ego speaking here, John O'Sullivan, son of Jack and Carmel. Um, but yeah, I think as spicy as that take is that like there's a title and that that title is is taken on by people to do these services. For me and my experience of this stories and my kind of delving deep, there's one there's one Dagda. I that's who I experience and I experience him in many different facets. Dagda as father, Dagda as king, Dagda as guardian over the dead, Dagda as warrior, Dagda as bard. He plays the harp himself. He plays the three like strains: the the gantre, the joyful strain, the 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 gall tray, the wailing strain, and the soon tray, the sleeping strain. Like he is this amazingly powerful, amazingly complex, amazingly detailed individual that I take a lot of inspiration from. But for me, there is only one. <laughs> so thank you very much for the cash or the question. I really appreciate it. And if you would like to know more, pop over, pick up some free resources from us at the irishpagan.school forward slash free, or go to the Irish Pagan School itself and take one of our courses and our classes there to dive deep and learn more about the deck. I think I even have a Dagda bundle where you can get a couple of the classes. They can get three of the classes, one of them for free if you get them in the Dagda bundle. So yes, hopefully that is something that inspires. Hopefully that is something that's interesting. And until next time, look after yourself. Take care. Goodbye.